Hey my friends, welcome back to the Jameson Brandon channel where we talk about all things money. Today we are going to talk and follow up on the conversation and topic of the cyber attacks, the staged cyber attacks that were exercised in 2020. If you remember, I shot that video before, uh, pretty similar to Event 201, which was done in uh, October of 2019, which coincidentally kind of prefaced what happened with uh, the corona outbreak. Well, we have the cyber attack training that happened in 2020 as well. I can't remember which month, but we are coming up on the second event, which is going to be July 9th, 2021. And the program itself is called uh, Cyber Polygon. You can literally go to cyberpolygon.com right now and read the same thing I'm looking at. I wanted to kind of re-go over this and then go over some concerning aspects of it. But I think a project like this and why this relates to this channel, obviously, is digital security. Okay, uh, we deal with, we talk about cryptocurrencies, we deal with cryptocurrencies, having your identity online, like that's hugely important. We need to be talking about these things on this channel if we're gonna be talking about money. I think the thought in this is it probably started off pretty pure like it probably started off as like this um good thing and i think this is good practice overall um i think it's a good thing to be thinking about digital security is a is a hugely overlooked aspect i think of our lives at the corporate level all the way down to the individual level like the fact that common passwords like in the early 90s were like god and like three letter four letter words like that uh, dad, I love, those were like the common passwords, right? Like when the first, when the internet first came out, it's not like the passwords are that much better now. Whereas my passwords, I couldn't even tell you what they are because they're just a bunch of shit. It's just a bunch of string of variables and numbers somewhere between 17 and 35 or 40 characters long. Does that protect me against everything? No, but it de definitely puts me a lot further ahead than somebody doing like password 01 and turn the, the A into an ad symbol or something or, or you know, put the zero one at the end. Uh, there's still a lot of that that goes on, which is why digital security, I brought it up in the 2020 trends report. I brought it up in the 2019 trends report. I've literally brought it up in every single trends report that I did is because there's so much hacking that occurs every year and so much data that's exposed every year, uh, whether that's, you know, maliciously through an actual cyber attack or even what Facebook and stuff sells on uh, and other sites sell your data about your behavior and your, you know, your cruising patterns while you're on their website. I want to say that because you look at videos like this and it's so easy to like jump to conclusions, especially right now where trust is really, really low and people are, are struggling to like discern between truth, fact and fiction. It, it makes it really tough. And when there's like a narrative in this whole messaging that sounds nefarious, it makes it really hard to, you know, get behind it. So here is uh, Klaus Schwab, which is the, the main kind of character. He's the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, which to me is a pretty troubling group in terms of just like overreach and some of the things that they're going for. Their promotional video on their website says the year is 2030, you'll own nothing and life has never been better. Something like that. So no thanks to that. The reason why this gets so much attention is because I think people are seeing that there is part of a narrative that's being shaped. You know, governments always want more control. People with power, elites, they always want more control. They always want more power, right? There is this narrative that's coming out, which is like take away and reject the ability to be able to own land, to be able to own guns in America, to be able to own things as an individual. And I think that's where a lot of people are really starting to uh, draw the line in the sand. So. Anyways, this site breaks down the whole concept. And so the 2021 concept would just bridge and build on what happened in 2020. Some interesting things I wanna point out. First off, I'm gonna have my editor insert this, but like this whole command center really reminds me of like some Star Wars shit, like not in a good way, like uh, in a Death Star and all the, uh, the the bad guys essentially in their in their ships, they had like whole teams on computers and on a network, you know, working towards a goal. I think again, there's a positive side to this and there always is, and that's what makes something like this so troubling is because it's there is really good things baked inside of this. And I think there's a lot of troubling things that like who regulates this and who controls this and who decides where we stop with all of this is, is the problem. But just this picture right here speaks volumes in terms of like um, getting a whole team to collaborate. We've got all these huge screens in front of us. We're monitoring in real time. This reminds me of the story I read, I think it was in 2017 or 18, Dannon like posted a photo for some sort of reason about how they monitor their social media. And it literally looked like this. It looked like a complete command center where they were monitoring outbreaks of hashtags and keywords that were negative against their brand so that they could combat it with an entire bot army and bot network. The stuff is clearly already going on. I think there's a huge positive to this, but also too, like we need to discuss and be able to be open about talking about the, the bad side of it, right? Yeah, I wanted to show you that and then in this. So this is the, the document, right? This is the 2020 breakdown. So this is the results report, right? What was kind of troubling in this is um, just like even some basic patterning, right? Like blue versus red. Well, it's coincident that Democrats are blue and Republicans are red, right? And so who were the good guys? Blue team. 
who are the bad guys, red team. And even something like that, like you think it's innocent, but maybe it's not. Because, you know, there, there is a lot of different ways to program people. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to program people. So anyways, um, the training exercise itself, like I said, seemed like a good idea, right? It was just uh, the attacker team tried to facilitate an attack and find vulnerabilities on the fly right then and there. And the blue team tried to defend it. Okay, so the training had a range of distinctive features. It was targeted at corporate teams rather than individuals for the participants to practice collaborative teamwork. Again, this is very positive. Given that the attack was carried out by organizers themselves, all the teams were on equal playing field and had the opportunity to objectively assess their capabilities. The companies did not risk their reputation. The teams were assigned numbers, disguise, real names, blah, 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 their organizations. The participants' own business IT infrastructure was not involved. So yeah, defense and response to the attacks as it was happening in real time. So that was interesting. Another thing I wanted to show you is all the way back at the beginning, which is why I think something like this is good in general, is this right here. 83% of companies have no recovery plans in place according to their research. I haven't looked into this to see this report. This is a whole nother report, but that's pretty troubling. And so we saw recently like proof of this is that the uh, the pipeline that was held for ransomware and they actually caved and gave in and paid, I think $5 million uh, supposedly in ransom. Okay, but the effect of that was huge because most of the Eastern seaboard in America ran out of gas. North Carolina, I think Tennessee had some issues. And then in Virginia and other states, gas went all the way upwards of $7 per gallon. So you can't tell me that that didn't have an effect. And so again, the general topic of what we're talking about is very important. I just don't like the aspect of like, we just all give the power away and just say, okay, this guy can control it. I don't know, I just wish there was like better ways to oversight this. I just, I don't have an answer to that personally. Yeah, some other interesting facts was just like how much COVID theme malicious uh, websites and malware and phishing started happening because of obviously the pandemic. So there's a 569% growth in COVID-19 theme malicious registrations. And there's some other concerning stats like that too. Again, like people trying to scam in the middle of a pandemic is it's pretty fucked up. Like you think about that, like, gosh, what kind of person would do that, right? But now let's let's pivot and let's kind of talk about some of the things that are a little bit concerning with, uh, with the whole narrative here. Okay, so I shared this article with you before. It's not like uh, Klaus Schwab is like brand new to talking about this. Here's his quote, a cyber attack with COVID, uh, COVID-like characteristics, I have no clue what that means, would spread faster and further than any biological virus. I do agree with that to the extent that viruses on the internet move faster. Like that's common sense. A a targeted uh, supply chain attack on corporate ecosystem in real time. That's what they did. Okay, so what I really like about what Sociable did here is um, they've been documenting pretty well a lot of the narrative that uh, Klaus Schwab has been talking about, which has been as early as, from what I could tell, 2013 with some of these talking points. This article, I don't know if you actually clicked through from the last video, but it, it goes much deeper and starts to break down some of these these different aspects. I'll talk about some of the more concerning ones, which is the digital ID. And then there was a uh, interesting part that they talk about misinformation. There's another guy talking about misinformation from the 2020 Cyber Polygon event. But the digital ID is concerning because we've obviously seen out of China, the social credit system, it just, just does not work. And it's really, really stifling to the economy. It's really prejudiced as well. You know, like for example, you get negative demerits or negative points for your dog pissing and shitting on the, on the sidewalk. You get demerits for jaywalking. You get demerits for these certain things, which then start to cut off your access. Like, could you actually believe this? It's so insane. It, it was just weird to talk about, but it starts to cut off your access to getting bus tickets, to getting gas, to getting plane tickets, to be able to leave the country. I'm not down with this at all. So let's look at this digital identity aspect because that was very, very concerning. Okay, so here's that same graphic. Essentially, some of the things that you can expect is, you know, everywhere you're clicking, commenting, sharing on social media, that's gonna be tied into it. Um, your financial transactions are gonna be tied into it. Your location is gonna be trackable, where you've traveled, what you've done, what you buy, sell, all this stuff. Uh, how much energy you even consume, because hey, why don't we just throw the climate control narrative into it? Like, who's gonna say where this stops, I guess, is the overarching thing I keep saying here in this video. It's like, who's gonna decide where this whole thing stops? The internet of bodies might trigger breakthroughs in medical knowledge, or might enable a surveillance state, unprecedented intrusion and consequence. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. So here we go. Here's like a look at it. And this was according to a brief that the World Economic Forum put out in 2020 about this uh, IOB, right? And so let's look at this. We have an implant. We have a depression headset, augmented reality contact lens, wearable UV monitor pacemaker, electronic tattoo, microchip implant, smartphone with health apps. We got a prosthetic on this guy. Self-lacing shoes, like what? Self-lacing shoes, who cares? Then let's look at the fitness one. Intraocular lens with camera internet connected glasses, tooth mounted sensor, uh, electronic pill, clothing with temperature monitoring, fertility measurement device, 
artificial pancreas, temperature bracelet, smartwatch fitness tracker, Bluetooth connected hearing aid, meditation headset. I guess I never realized this, you know, because I used to be big into biohacking. And I thought all this stuff would be so cool. Like, yeah, just give me, you know, a shot of everything that I need for the day. You know, I don't like eating food. And, and, and so like I was all for this for the longest time. Like, yeah, let's let's merge with bio. But like there are some serious downsides uh, to all of this that need to be discussed. And, and like I said, who who discusses this? Who holds the plans? Because like this guy's just taking the reins and saying like, yeah, oh, me, me, me. I'll do it. Like, I don't want this guy to do it. And it's all going to be masked under this, like solving problems of capitalism and solving problems of inequality, but it won't be solving those things. And I'm sure people see that. There'd be debtor contract tracing apps, right? Which we already have seen some of the downside to contract tracing apps uh, with the, the COVID ordeal here in America and overseas, right? Great Reset is not a mandate from the people. It is a manufactured ideology concocted by a group of unelected globalists trying to sway stakeholders into creating a new economy and social structure out of the destruction of the old. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Here they're talking about the event 201, which was uh, literally led to right after that was the COVID outbreak. Now, what's interesting is like now in the last week or two, have you noticed the news narrative is now it's okay to be saying that this stuff might have come from a, a lab in Wuhan. But when this was said early on by a lot of people, myself included, you're laughed at and you're cons considered a conspiracy theorist. Well, once again, conspiracy theorist is being validated. There's that piece. And then I just want to kind of show you this is and this is a very true thing here. This breakdown is um, when you're trying to sell a vision to somebody. You have to repeat it. And that's what this is right here. They're saying like, how has this guy actually done this? Well, since 2013, 2012, then you just start to say your stuff and you just repeat it over and over again. So here we go. It took Schwab and the Davos elite about six years to watch their uh, reset ideology grow from a tiny Swiss seed in 2014. Okay, so I was wrong. It started in 2014. I thought it was sooner than that. Announce your intention to revamp every aspect of society with global governance and keep repeating that message. This is the biggest key here is you just keep repeating it. And then it's something is bound to go bad and to where it makes you look like a genius. Kind of like how the clock is right twice a day. A broken clock is right twice a day, right? Well, the same thing goes for predictionists and for people who, you know, try and call tops and bottoms in Bitcoin and markets is, you know, eventually they will be right. Even though everyone ignores the fact that for 30 years they were wrong and probably would have cleaned people out financially. But, you know, now they're right. So we need to pay attention to them. It's the same thing here. When your message isn't getting through, simulate fake pandemic scenarios that show why the world needs a great reset. If the fake pandemic scenarios aren't persuasive enough, wait a couple months for a real global crisis to occur. Repeat step one. Again, we're pretending like none of this was done on purpose and there's nothing nefarious going on here is that this guy's definitely capitalized more on this global reset and a narrative ever since you know COVID happened and there's now presidents of countries from Justin Trudeau uh, Merkel Macron they've all parroted essentially the same talking points build back better Biden has even talked about build back better well build back better is a talking point from the World Economic Forum idea here, right? So here's like kind of some of the origins of the talking points. Klaus Schwab calls for great reset and WEF repeats message. Like they started this in 2014 when they were still meeting in, you know, Switzerland. Between 2014 and 2017, a WEF called to reshape, restart, reboot, and reset the global order every single year, each aimed at solving various crises. Here's what I was looking for. Okay, so in 2014, WEF publishes meeting agenda entitled The Reshaping of the World, Consequences for Society, Politics, and Business. 2015, published article in collaboration with Vox EU called We Need to Press the Restart on the Global Economy. 2016, WEF holds panel called How to Reboot Global Economy. 2017, publishes article saying Our World Needs a Reset in How We Operate. Then in 2018, Davos elites turn their heads to creating simulations. Okay, and that's when the simulations really started, which I didn't know this either. But on May 15, 2018, John uh, Hopkins Center and uh, Health Security hosted the Clade X pandemic exercise. That was the very first one that happened. That came well before the two, event 201, which most people just know about the event 201, but they didn't know that this actually started in 2018. So, I mean, kudos to them for working on this for, what, six years? The Clade X event also included discussion panels with real policymakers who assessed that governments and industry are not adequate prepared for the fictitious global pandemic. In the end, the outcome was tragic. The most catastrophic pandemic in history with hundreds of millions of deaths, economic collapse, and social upheaval. Well, like, if we were supposed to use this to get better prepared. We didn't get better prepared because that was in 2018, 19, 20, 21, three years later, uh, two years later when it actually happened, it's probably just as bad as what they had in the simulation. There are major unmet global vulnerabilities and international system challenges posed by pandemics that will require new robust forms of public-private cooperation to address. Event 201 from October 2019. 
So the, really the setup for all of this was in the Cladex exercise in 2018. And then we had the Event 201 in 2000, October of 2019. And in 2020 was when we had the uh, actual you know, event happen, the uh, COVID-19. And here we are, 2020. Um, they've really jumped on this, the bandwagon. They've, like I said, they got a lot of people uh, parroting this. They got, uh, you know, heads of state, heads of country parroting this same kind of narrative of uh, now is the time for a great reset. They're just trying to wrap anything they can into it, is what it seems. And this is like the side of it that I think is nefarious. And this is the side of it that I think more people need to be paying attention to. And again, like this happens a lot. Like what starts off as a good, genuine, honest thing could be hijacked really, really easily into something that's not. So I just wanted to bring your attention to these things do a follow-up video and obviously uh, we should have our eyes on this July 9th event and uh, see how this goes and and uh, take away from that if it's a bigger event or if it's different in some sort of way or if there's more people involved you know be paying attention to those sorts of things but that's all I got for you in this video thank you so much for tuning in if you want to help us you know spread this video even to just more subscribers interacting with it in some sort of way helps it climb in the algorithms and it get shared around more so just like comment below and if you're brand new to the channel go ahead and if you like this sort of thing subscribe and be on the lookout more videos coming soon see ya